again. Welcome to another video. Uh, this video actually is going to stem off of a topic that came up on stream, one of the last streams I did. So if you watch that, this may be repeating some of the stuff, um, but I thought I'd make a video on it because I think it's something that some people talk about and some people don't. So I thought I'd put my thoughts out there and I'm curious to hear other people's thoughts on what you're doing and, and what your opinion is on it. Um, Cause I guess I didn't know, I didn't know it was such a topic, but this is basically gonna be a quick conversation about why I collect IPs in my automation, not just uh, subdomains. So I know a lot of people do, you know, subfinder, a mass, sublister, um, all this different kind of stuff to get domain names and then we'll save in the database or do whatever and then throw it through HTTPX and see if it's alive and that kind of thing. Um, but I actually st have started and have been for a while um, resolving my domains back to, you know, A records or whatever or to IP addresses and mapping my domains to IP addresses and then also inventorying targets IP addresses as well as their subdomains and keeping track of changes and additions and new stuff and, and whatnot. Um, so I really wanted to blow through quick, just hopefully keep it a quick video on why I do that. Um, and again, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. If you think there's something I maybe missed or there's something um, extra that you'd like to throw in there, uh, Definitely, like I said, jump in the comments, DM me, whatever. Um, I'd love to hear about it, but let's get into it. So the main three reasons are that I'm gonna speak about are virtual hosting, um, like my thoughts on like port scanning efficiency, and then basically just the fact that like more data can equal more enumeration in the future, even if it isn't necessarily automated. So starting with that virtual hosting, this is kind of stuff that people talk about often, um, but it's just kind of hanging out there. I'm specifically talking about name-based virtual hosting, specifically here for like why I collect IP addresses, which is where multiple domain names can actually resolve to the same IP address and can be hosted on the same IP address, right? So like example.com and example.net can, can go to the same IP address. But um, basically what that means is uh, if you see something where that comes up and all of a sudden you have a target where you have the 30 domains you found with uh, Subfinder and you resolve them and they only go back to five IP addresses, that means that every IP address you find may turn into more than one domain, right? Which means finding new IP addresses for that target that's doing virtual hosting like that is actually really lucrative for you. And knowing that is the case is really lucrative because let's say I find one new subdomain that resolves to an IP address. If I go, do you know a reverse DNS on that IP address, I actually may come back with more domains than just the one that I originally found, right? So doing that kind of like backtracking with our DNS and that kind of thing on subdomains you already have, if you know virtual hosting is taking place by grabbing these IP addresses, that may actually allow you to blow up the domain list you actually have, as well as when you find new IPs leading to more than just one domain. So that's kind of why it would be good to know and why I would do that. The second one is port scanning and port scanning efficiently. This is just kind of my preference. Again, if you're virtual hosting and I have a list of five domains and I try and port scan based on domains, all five of the domains are gonna be on that same IP address, which means that I'm basically scanning the same asset five times, right? If I have five domains pointed to one IP address or you know whatever. So if I can get it down to IP address and then actually just port scan based on IP address, I find that one, then I'm not doing the double scanning and two, just in like weird, like I don't actually have like solid proof against hundreds of assets or anything like that, that I can like put together and show. But in my experience, like fiddling with it on the side, not only does it happen a little faster, but there's always that conundrum of as you turn up like a mass scan where it might like have false positives or false negatives while you're port scanning. For some reason that seems to like be at a more of a minimum to me when I'm port scanning IPs instead of trying to use that one tool that you can use mask in with domains or, or you know whatever to like make it so you can scan with domains or just using nmap to scan with domains. I just feel like it works. You can use the faster tools and the faster tools are more accurate and stuff like that and work just a lot nicer if you use IP addresses. That's again like it's not necessarily a hill I die on. It's just like my personal preference how I do things um, and I find it happens a little faster, a little more efficient. So the last one, when I say more data is more enumeration, basically what I mean by that is like, there's a chance, let's say if, like maybe you tried to look online to see if the company is like part of an ASN, if it's like a bigger company and maybe it didn't pop up for some reason, 
but all of a sudden you f you start finding all these IP addresses that are together and it all seems to be on the same ASN. Like maybe then it is worth actually just doing reverse DNS on all the IP addresses and then ASN to see if any of them come back to a seed domain you've already seen, right? Like for example, if you're like looking at Yahoo stuff and you see a bunch of assets pop up on an ASN that you haven't recorded for Yahoo yet, like maybe it's worth just scanning that whole ASN reverse DNS on all the IP addresses and seeing if any of the domains come back with a, with a seed domain or whatever that Yahoo owns. Like maybe you did find a new ASN that they were hosting stuff on and you can find some, you know, like ASN neighbors or even like neighbors within the ASN or that kind of thing. So that's one thing. The other thing is you can go look at where all these IPs are, are coming from, right? So the one big example for that is if you're doing recon on a company and you're actually saving and enumerating their IP address space, and their IP assets, and you notice that every IP address that they're running on is all in Azure, or it's all in AWS, or even more specifically, it's all in AWS US East One, because you can go online and all these cloud providers publicly have their IP ranges online. So you, it's very easy, and there's tools out there. There's a tool called Edge that can do this um, that I'll link below. Same thing is there's tools like the one by Jason Haddix for scraping the AWS IP space. So if you're enumerating a company and you notice, oh my gosh, like all their assets are on AWS, then maybe it's worth grabbing that tool that Jason just put out and just running it continuously on AWS and putting in, you know, you have to put in a keyword that you want to search on the certificates. And maybe that keyword you search is the domain you're, you know, doing a recon on. And maybe you grab one or two more from just trolling the AWS IP space but you're not necessarily just shooting in the dark because you know that's where all their assets are at already. So it's sort of like smart shooting in the dark, if that makes sense. Um, so this is kind of really all I had. Um, I just know it was a question that came up now twice on two different streams that I did. Um, and people seem to really enjoy having this conversation on stream. So I thought I'd condense it into a video where so hopefully if there's a next time someone asks me or if someone is thinking about this data, it's just that one more extra way because I know here we're all about bumping up the automation uh, efficiency and bumping up the findings and all that kind of stuff. This, these kind of things are like one more way to just bump up those number of assets, right? It's really cheap to get data storage. We talk about it all the time on stream to just store a bunch of data. So putting those IP addresses in there is not going to break the bank of any automation. You're not going to be doing that much more runtime. It's not that big of a deal. And it's so worth it because it can tell you these kind of things that can lead to either A, more findings, not necessarily findings as in bugs, but more assets, more attack service, more shadow IT, all this kind of stuff, which then can lead to more bugs and that kind of a thing. So that's really all I got, guys. Moral of the story is, while you're grabbing subdomains, grab the IP addresses at the same time, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.